I have never desired your good opinion. People fear what they do not understand. I have a headache, a badge, and a gun. Power is yours. Behave. I was just trying to start a conversation. And share the wonders I've seen. Hi, and welcome to The Wonders I've Seen, where there's no such thing as weird or normal, there's just different. I'm your host, Tanagra, and today we'll be talking about Netflix's new series, She-Ra and the Princess of Power, a reboot of the 1985 filmation series, She-Ra, Princess of Power. Today, my liquid nourishment is a raspberry, kale, and pineapple smoothie. Yes, I wanted something sweet and healthy because it's the holidays, which means all cake all the time with a little bit of hot mold spiced wine thrown in it to shake it up. So let's get to it. So if you're not familiar with Shira, Shira is a story of a young woman named Adora who finds a sword and by the power of Grey Skull holding it up to the sky morphs into Shira, the princess of power. In the updated 2018 version, however, Shira is one of several princesses of power. And I think this is a wonderful change to the original. I actually watched the 1985 filmation series as a child. Um, for starters, she is supposed to be a teen and I'm pretty sure she's in like her mid twenties to her early thirties, which is great by all means. Um, women of that age group also need representation, but for a children's show, uh, it needed a bit more diversity. And Noelle Stevenson, uh, the creator, of She-Ra, the showrunner, but as well as you're probably familiar with her work from the Eisner Award women comics, Nimona and Lumberjanes, gives us that. She and her team of all female creators, uh, whether or not that was on purpose, uh, whether or not it just happened, give us She-Ra and a princess of power that look like what they are. Young women who have been raised to be in power, whether it's as fighters, whether it's fighters with water, um, who are diplomats, who are young politically active women who are guiding the future of their world and to say that that is timely would be an understatement in the least uh so stevenson said that she was inspired by hayao miyazaki and mobius and you can see it a bit in the drawings both of the whimsical elements um of the world that Shira inhabits and also in the aesthetic of the evil horde. So if you're not familiar with it, um, Adora is in this version of the 2018, if you haven't watched the show by the way you should, but Adora is, I well they don't really clarify but you get the sense that she was probably kidnapped or her family and village were probably killed and they raised her um, the Horde, they were killed by the Horde, the Horde took her in, and then they raised her. And so she's been raised believing that the Horde are the good people and that the evil princesses are the bad ones. Now, one, I knew I was going to love the series when it opens and it's a training exercise of Adora while she's still with the Horde. And the training exercise is they're fighting machines and they have to destroy all the princesses. And all the princesses are your stereotypical quote unquote princess who has like the large princess dress and all of the images of them are pink and they're all wearing the little crowns and they <laughs> they have to be destroyed by Adora and her team as a training exercise. And it's a nice little tongue in cheek of like prepare yourself that this show is going to destroy but your idea of princesses is that we're not going to be doing that here. Um, that it means a lot more and that you don't have to look a certain way, act a certain way, dress a certain way in order to be a princess. That is simply a title with responsibilities and past that it doesn't sh sh say anything else about you. And so that theme of turning the idea of what it means to be a princess on its head continues throughout the show and it's done beautifully. And in addition to turning that idea of what it means to be a princess on its head, it also turns the idea of what it means to be female and what it means to be um, feminine as well and what it means to be a girl and in the case of Bo, what it means to be a young male on its head and sort of plays with the idea of gender fluidity, of fashion, body shapes, um, uh, skin color, 
even your temperament. Like you don't have to be jolly and constantly running around smiling and literally twinkling in the case of Glimmer. Rather, you can just be like moody and still be a good friend like Mermista. You can be sort of absent-minded and uh, ultimately morally gray um, like Trap... Entrapta, excuse me. <laughs> Although that name, really, y'all? Really? Um, and so, yeah, she was sort of takes all of this, um, mixes it up under the guidance of Noel Stevenson, and you get this beautiful new show of, I think, for people of any age. Um, I know that it's TVY7, uh, mostly due to the fact that there is some a fantastical violence, which I definitely understand. But if you're older than that, you can appreciate it. You can appreciate that you can look any way, you can be any gender, you can be a human male who likes to run around with his midriff um, showing, <laughs> which is an excellent character trait. I love that they worked that into Bo. And you can still be badass and shoot your arrows and help out your magical, magical friends. Like there's nothing that says that you can't do something just by working hard. Um, and yeah, it's a it's a really positive show. I don't want to like give away too much of it because a lot of it is a very emotional up and down roller coaster um, with Adora dealing with her own feelings of insecurity. Um, also, the fact that once again being very timely, this generation of Princesses of Power is actually the second generation following um, the previous Princesses of Power who were defeated by the Horde and ultimately disbanded. And so now they're coming along with Adora um, and Glimmer saying that we should get back together and fight again. Once again, very timely. Um, not really going for subtlety in this way, but there's so much other nuance in the character development, the character destruction, um, character construction, excuse me, how the story goes that I didn't really need it in my overall arching of good and evil um, themes. So... If you haven't watched Shira, you should watch it. It's magical and it's not like a it's not happy go lucky, but it's just so positive and hopeful and it speaks to so many larger issues of the world, of your view on the world, of your approach to being who you are, of dealing with your own insecurities, of what it truly means to be a friend, to have friends to choose sides in a war, to find out that your parental figures aren't as perfect as you thought, um, to find out the people that you loved think of you in a completely different way, um, and dealing with those. And those are issues that you deal with, not only as a teenager who's trained to be, who's been trained from birth to be a commander and as Adora and Katra and Glimmer and Bo have, but just also as, a, as an adult. Um, and you see this a bit more with um, Angela, Queen of Bright Moon, Glimmer's mother, when she's talking about the previous uh, princesses of power that she was part of um, and that rebellion and what happened when her husband, the king, died and how they dealt with that and how ultimately it just seems like they sort of gave up. But then her emotions in dealing with that and sort of seeing a new generation putting itself once again through those same fights um, in those same places of danger and what, how that affects her and what that means for them going forward trying to do this not only the same and um, getting the princess together but also better and ultimately being successful. And it should be noted that at the end, yes, um, there is a level of success but there's also still a lot of questions left unanswered. So like there's this part when Shira first raises up the sword and she's like, for the power of Grayskull and excuse me, Adora transforms into Shira and then she transferred back and she's like, who's Grayskull? And you're sitting there wondering that too, because in this, in this uh, iteration, we don't have, this isn't a Shira that's a spinoff of, of um, He-Man. So we don't know what Grayskull is. We don't know where that's coming from. And then later we find out that the sword was placed there by these mystical beings and you're like, oh, okay, but I still don't know what Gray Skull is. And so that's just sort of left out there for you to figure out. You still don't know the background of um, 
Adora and her childhood are of Katra. They were raised with these groups of children who basically, that means almost all their soldiers, have been orphaned. So where'd they come from? Like, how'd they get them? Did they choose um, Adora because they knew that she would be Shira or that there was a chance that she would be? None of this is really answered. And um, Shadow Weaver, who is the parental figure for both Adora as well as Katra, at, by the end of the show is um, not doing well. That's all I'll say because I don't want to ruin it. So um, there's a lot that's going to be played out as the season goes on. And I think we'll continue to see the excellent character development, these idea of morality being gray, of making choices, of dealing with your own personal ongoings. And at the same time, you are supposed to be the person saving the world. Like, how do you handle your own insecurities and your own things like jealousy and personal relationships when ultimately you have all these people looking to you for guidance? And I think that's very, uh, I think that definitely is reflective of what a lot of young people now, whether they're uh, socially active as uh, SJWs, whether they're politically active, feel the weight of the failures of those who have come before us and also the pressure that we're somehow supposed to fix everything going forward. Um, and Shira and the Princesses of Power capture that beautifully. And where you are on the side of moving towards the future is also even further complicated by what type of future or are you, are you trying to move towards? So that's all I'm going to say about She-Ra. Um, check out She-Ra and the Princesses of Power on Netflix. It's amazing. It's very easy to binge. I binged it. Um, if you don't want to watch it for the diverse, empowered, um, gender fluid, um, aesthetically female characters, then watch it for the uber awesome magical girl transformation. Because this is the first time I've ever seen that, where part of the transformation is that she punches her hand into her fist, throws up her sword, catches it, and then she's like, bam, I'm a princess. Like, I love it. And just that show of strength and athleticism is also shown in the animation of the characters and how their bodies are drawn as well, which is a beautiful thing to see. Um, you don't all have to be stick figures with a large chest and, you know, perfect thighs and legs in order to be a heroine or a princess. You can have be a fighter and have the build of a fighter. You can, you know, be soft and curvy and you can still be powerful and you can still fight like they're this show did a really good job of showing a variety of visions of femininity of gender fluidity of not really having to actually choose where you want to be on that line and i love the fact that Bo walks around in crop tops because i mean maybe it was a nod to queer eye because lord knows they're always trying to get um, men in crop tops but I love that like you can dress how you want and that doesn't demand that you uh, that you hold yourself or act a certain way you know and yeah so anyway watch she -Ra. I'm sorry I sound a bit stuffy I am getting a little bit sick but I really do love this show I think that you should check it out let me know what you think about it um, which princess of power do you think that you would be and yeah i hope you enjoy it and then we'll be talking about season two in the coming future well that's all the wonders i have to share with you today about netflix's she-ra princess of the power to continue the discussion you can find me on twitter at tonography gnfc for all you android users you can find us on anchor and radio public for all you iThings users check us out on itunes and overcast and if you like to listen while you're watching an awesome slideshow, we're also on YouTube. Join us randomly on Rabbit for Twist Wonder Watchers, where I'll be watching and chatting about some of my favorite genre films and TV shows. Suggest a show, suggest a movie. I'll be announcing the Wonder Watchers on Twitter at TanagraGGNFC. So leave us a message on some platform. Thanks for joining. Make choices and don't frell it up. <laughs> <laughs>